Hello, today I wanted to talk a little about something called algebraic design. It is a very wonderful technique for designing APIs and all sorts of interfaces uh, in languages like Scala, like, like Haskell, like TypeScript. And what it does is it allows you to experiment with the design space, like explore the possibilities of how you can um, define an API, like what do you want this API to be, uh, how do you want people to call it. Uh, you can do all of that without uh, without actually committing to a specific implementation of it or a data type that will back the, uh, the DSL that you define. So let's get to it. I'm going to show you a couple of examples. I'm not going to uh, talk about some theory behind it. Uh, I only learned about this from a book, from the Red Book of Scala uh, a couple of years ago when I was first reading it. Uh, and I, I wanted to just share this because I've been applying the same technique over and over uh, many times. So I hope this will be beneficial to you as it has been for me. So let's get to it. So the problem that I'm going to try to solve in this example is let's say we have a game controller or a keyboard and you want to define uh, combos basically. So a sequence of moves that you have to press in order to execute uh, a given command or maybe uh, strike the opponent in a fighting game in a particular way. Uh, basically like a sequence of moves, uh, maybe like X, Y, Z or X, then Y and Z, then just X, something like this. So we're going to work with just three buttons. This is a Scala 3 enum. Uh, we're using Scala 3 because I'm going to define a couple more enums today and I don't want to type all the boilerplate that Scala 2 requires you to, to write to get enums. So we have button, which is which can be one of the three cases. And basically our DSL that we are going to define, because we are going to define a DSL, is going to deal with values of this type. And that's a given, like this is something that we will always want to do. We know that this is how this will be represented and we can just start designing our API. So let's say we're going to have a combo um, DSL or like a combo algebra. Let's call it a DSL because that's the more popular word. So one thing I want to be able to do is define a, a simple combo. The simplest combo will be just press a button. So press button and this will return a combo. But I don't have a combo yet. I don't have a type for this. And at this point, you might be like, okay, let's define an enum. No, we won't be defining an enum yet. What we will do instead is add a type parameter here. Or you can do the same, I think, uh, if you define a type member. But for now, we're going to go with a type, type parameter. So uh, this will be just some type. We have no idea what it is, and we don't need to know that. Uh, we can just keep designing our APIs. Uh, our API, our combo DSL, and we'll see what the type is when we get to, to decide what it is. So I'm going to also define a different kind of combo. This will be just press like press and hold, so something like hold a button. Uh, this is going to be the same signature basically. Uh, by the way, if you're wondering about the completions I'm using here, this is GitHub Copilot. I talked about this in uh, the previous video, the one about VS Code extensions. Uh, there should be a link somewhere here. So these are the very basic uh, combos that we can define. Uh, another one that I want to do is press these two buttons at the same time. So both, uh, and let's say one button and another, and this will again be a combo. We are not implementing these methods. These, these are just the interface because we just want to define the DSL, something that the, the colors of our API will use. Uh, I can already start trying to use this. Uh, for example, here I can define like a demo. I will obviously remove this later, but I can just I can I can do this right. Uh, so I'm going to say maybe uh, both press uh, button X and then uh, hold button Y. Of course, I need a comma here. Uh, we found a combo. What's the problem? Yeah, the problem is that uh, I I went too far ahead. Basically, uh, this doesn't need to work with just buttons. Maybe I want to do you have to press X and hold Y at the same time. So obviously this cannot just work with buttons. We need to work with entire combos. So let's do that. So yeah, so notice that both is now a method that is like fully generic. We have absolutely no idea what either of the parameters is, and we have absolutely no idea what the return type is. So this is completely abstract, uh, but we are still able to, to use this because eventually we will know and we will be able to get values of type combo by using one of these two methods. These are currently the only ways of getting a value of it. 
uh, from the perspective of, of combo DSL because the implementation could actually know what combo is and supply some more values. But for now, this is all we know. Uh, so this is one, one example that we can do. So one thing I want to do as well is press this button and then press this button after you're done with the previous one. So uh, the, this can be a button press or a hold or whatever, I don't care. So let's say uh, this would be a sequence uh, of one combo and another one. So these are the two operations that both work on just parameters of type combo. Uh, let's say I want another one, press this or that. So this will be basically just like both, except it will be uh, one off, something like this. Uh, the names don't really matter here. And then we can still, we can, we can use this already, like maybe press X and then do one of the following, either hold Y or press uh, button Z. So we can do things like that. We can use all these methods uh, and we still don't know what combo is. So once we are satisfied with this API, uh, we know that this is like this demo, this is how we want to call this API. We are satisfied with the, the, the DSL. Of course you can, th this is, I'm not over, like I wouldn't leave it at this. Maybe I would define some sort of uh, extension methods. So we can say something like, uh, I know X, um, I don't know, then Y or Z, something like this, or maybe like Y hold. Basically, you can, you can do all sorts of magic stuff. This is Scala after all, but I'm just going to stop at this. And at this point, we can do a couple of things. First of all, I'm going to remove this just for, as a comment for now. We can do a couple of things. We can start implementing Combo DSL and specify what Combo is in the implementation so that uh, when I use it as a, let's say, um, Combo, something like this maybe, we'll have a Combo DSL of Combo. If this is abstract as it is now, uh, the implementation of demo will still not know what combo is. Or maybe we want to deal with a concrete type, we'll have some sort of enum, and this will no longer be generic. Uh, now demo will be able to tell what combo is and it will be able to, uh, to analyze the, the value that it gets and so on. So we have this choice later, like how we want to uh, call this API, uh, this, this DSL, but most importantly, this does not need to be generic. Like we can at this point already remove this type parameter because we have a, a combo enum. Of course, this will also need to be adjusted and we can just keep designing the, the combo, uh, the combo enum and we can start working on the representation of this DSL as a data structure. So we can do it this way. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with this, but the best part is that we didn't have to de define this combo enum uh, until we were done with the whole DSL. So this is only like we, we don't need to bother doing two things at once, like designing the DSL and the representation. We just had to do one thing at once, which I think is really nice. So even if you are not going to stick to the very polymorphic interface or an interface that has a, I don't know, this could be a type member. Um, this could very well be a type member and then you still don't need to expose the type here. Like you can actually make it impossible to see this type if you implement combo DSL and don't expose like uh, combo DSL. You can do something like this and create an anonymous instance and just define the type here and then implement all the methods. So nobody else using this will know what combo is uh, from, from this DSL, right? So yeah, you have, you have a variety of options but most importantly, we didn't have to define what combo is earlier, and we are now free to define whatever structure we want to give it. Uh, so that's the example. Oh, one, one more thing, like if you were to actually do this, like hide the type as much as possible, you have to ask yourself, yourself a question, like what can the caller of this API do with these values? Because right now, you can only build more of them. You can only build more of these values and you cannot actually you know, do anything with them. So eventually you would have to supply something like, I don't know, compile, compile a combo to maybe to a string or maybe to a, I don't know, to a function from a stream of button press to a Boolean, something like this. Like, does this stream of button presses and holds um, actually match this combo, right? Something like this would be necessary, especially if you don't expose any information about the type, about what combo is. So you have to think about that. If you actually expose the type, uh, then you can leave this interpretation of, of what a combo is and how to, you know, how to take all these results of these functions and make something useful with them. 
you can leave this up to the user or maybe to some other uh, interfaces that will actually handle the compilation of this type to something else. By the way, uh, we could do the same for button. We, we can actually make this generic. Um, I'm going to leave this as a type member and to do the same for button. And if we remove this, actually we don't have to, we can just keep it like this. A uh, here button is uh, the X, Y, or Z. Uh, and if we wanted to do the demo uh, that we had before, we can no longer do that because this kind of button is a different kind of button. Actually, Scala 3 does it very well like to display the difference. This is a button and this is button squared, <laughs> uh, but a different type of button, right? And this makes it uh, clear why the error is like that. So button is not button, you see. Uh, so we cannot use that because this is a different type, but we, what we can do is we can say X button, something like this, and we can use that. We can do the same thing for other buttons in here. And we can still experiment with the API even without knowing what button is, like that it's going to be backed by an enum. So I think that's pretty cool. And an upside of this is that you can implement a DSL like this for multiple types. Uh, like in, in the same application, you can actually have multiple instances of this. Uh, so we are now sort of in the tagless final territory. I don't want to get into that today. Uh, just saying it's an option. You can, you can do that. You can very well do that. Uh, so let's get back. And I'm going to show you something else. This is something I actually did for uh, one of my side projects. So I had a security algebra, and this was a tagless final algebra, with, so basically with a polymorphic effect. And I wanted to restrict access to a certain effect to only users who have a certain role. And then I wanted to be able to surround a code block, which resulted in an effect, and say, okay, in this block, you have this role. So we need, we need just two operations for this. We need some like require role with a role here and an effect. Uh, now the A needs to be a parameter here and the role, well, I don't want to think about what the role is. Let's just make it a parameter here. And then we'll have something very similar, uh, give role. Just the names are absolutely imaginary. Don't you know, <laughs> make your own names if, you, if, you, if it comes to this. And when I played around with this API and I actually make a, made a demo inside, um, something like this maybe, you, you know, you can say um, give role, uh, I know, admin, and then require role admin and this FA. Like if this makes sense, then I'm going to implement this at some point. Uh, but again, I don't have an admin. Uh, I don't have a role. I can, you, you know, you can always use the placeholders. This is fine, but if you actually want to play with kind of real values, you can always, always make them. And at some point you can actually extract an enum. So maybe case admin, um, know, case user, and then you can change this and you can actually implement this as role admin or just inline this and say role admin here. And this still works, right? So even though I didn't, I, I never meant to make role a generic type parameter and keep it like this, I gave myself the room to experiment with the API, with these methods or with the methods in Combo DSL uh, without committing to what the representation of these types was. And then later on, I would just replace them with something real, something that we have as an enum or as a case class. Uh, doesn't really matter. Uh, as long as all the operations, uh, we are able to call them in here, like everything that we need from this type is here. Um, I'm going to show you just one more thing. If role was generic and we had still this uh, admin method and we use it. Uh, let's say I wanted some type class of it. Maybe I, want to sh I wanted uh, this to be an instance of the show type class. I can just require that here. Uh, this is Cal3, by the way, you can uh, actually have implicit parameters on a trait, which is wonderful. You can actually have parameters on a trait, including implicit parameters. Uh, so right now I'm just requiring that. And then, you know, in the demo, I can do uh, admin show if I import like cast implicit, I guess. So I can use the, the instance that I got from here, uh, even though the real type doesn't have that instance, right? I haven't written that yet but I can use it because this code doesn't know that the role here 
is the same as the role here. So this is a great way to experiment with APIs that use certain characteristics of a type and certain values of a type. So here we have the values, uh, like the ways that we can get the value, you can always like define these ways inside this DSL or algebra. You can then remove them later if you don't want them. And if you want some sort of type classes, then you can always pass that from somewhere else, uh, or you know you can pass that here, uh, like using show role. And still, you don't have to commit to the to the representation. So I hope this was convincing enough to show you how valuable this is. And you can apply this to any kind of code, like even if you have something as real as um, I'm saying real because. Most of us probably don't deal with DSLs like this on a daily basis. Like this, the chance to design something like this comes only once in a while or even less often. Um, but something like this may be more likely. Uh, but what we usually work with is something like maybe a user repository. And you have something like find user uh, by ID, user ID, uh, IO option user. So this would be pretty typical and actually not very unreal. Uh, I think many of us have cases like this. And yeah, for you, maybe you don't want to define what the user is or a user ID. So you can always do this. If you, if you don't need to know what these types are, you can just pretend you will know later. And then you can replace this with a real data type. And then uh, we can do the same, like maybe create user. And maybe this will return unit. We can reuse these types and never say what they are. And this is a very real kind of interface. Like I, I have interfaces like this, except these are concrete types. So then later on, I would make a case class for one of these things, for the other one, and just remove these type parameters and be happy. So uh, you can do this in real situations like this as well. But I think where this shines the most is in cases that are more abstract, more like uh, DSLs uh, than just services, just you know the usual stuff. Uh, I think this is where this, this technique really shines. Uh, I'm going to link some resources. There's a book called, I think, Algebraic Design Something by Sandy McGuire. Uh, there's going to be a link in the description. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, as always, if you liked, uh, please leave a like subscribe and hit the bell icon and do whatever you want in the comments. So I'll see you in the next episode and thank you for watching.